Ishtar and VHS. Oh my god, it's the director's cut of Ishtar on Blu-ray. And what the fuck? It's the Ishtar trailer on 35mm? Hey, it's me, Colin from Canada. Oh, hi, Colin. Hi, Jay. I saw that you guys broke your Tom Green beer bottle, so I brought you up another one from the Great White North. Oh, gee, Colin, thanks. Hey, since you're here, do you want to watch some movies? Sure. So, Colin, what's their first movie? First up is Lady Terminator. She slays anyone in her way. I think there's like five of her on the cover. That's like the uh, uh, Blood Deaths guy, how he has multiple arms. Explosive action and a steamy romance crash head on in this thrill a minute story of a temptress seeking revenge for a century old betrayal. The South Sea Queen was a sensual beauty with an insatiable appetite for sex. Finally bested by her 100th husband, Elias. <laughs> This is not what I expected. <laughs> Our 100th husband, Elias. What does Arnold Schwarzenegger in female form show I, up? I have no idea. Hmm. What? 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 <laughs> she does so many keggles that she is able to crush his penis <laughs> to death. Nice. Rich, how do you know the word kegel? She swore revenge on his great-granddaughter. A hundred years later, an anthropology student named Tanya is possessed by the queen and sets out to fulfill the curse. Dressed in black leather, of course, sporting a machine gun, she stalks the streets seducing and destroying new lovers as she searches for Elias' descendant, a pretty rock singer named Erica. This is like a desperate editing attempt to fix a boring movie. <laughs> okay. Yep. When any movie fails, just cut to that shot of her walking. Um, so Erica has a sacred dagger that can destroy Tanya. Uh, so we got sacred daggers now, huh? And a okay. tough cop who thinks the legend is a silly superstition until Tanya litters the streets with mangled bodies and turns him into a believer. Sure. Nothing about what you just described makes any sense to me. Nope. Okay. Oh, wait, wait okay. Then... What? What? What is happening? <laughs> what? Is Are that you... her? That's two her. Two different movies? <laughs> what? What? What is happening? <laughs> We should point out, we do have a second copy of Lady Terminator, and the, the VHS rental sticker says it belongs on the bottom shelf, worst of the worsts. So then it's decided we don't even need to, to watch it. Uh, yeah, we can just destroy it right now, Sweet. I guess. Sounds good. Whoa! <laughs> He's dead! She really didn't like that guy. And she kicked him in the nuts, too! <laughs> oh, man. So our next possible movie is Lost in Dinosaur World. This is not even on the IMDb. We cannot find any information on this. We don't even know for sure if it's a film. Uh, but we're gonna, we're gonna try Lost in Dinosaur World. A beast is stirring. <laughs> Why is that funny? That's terrifying. Mm -hmm. Didn't you see Jurassic World? It was the most intense, scary movie. No. Oh, okay. No. The sky is growing dark. A chill is moving in. Strange animal sounds fill the air. And the thundering footsteps of a Tyrannosaurus Rex are getting closer and closer. You are lost in Dinosaur World, TM. Oh, weird. What's that thing on her head? Well, nobody knows for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Embark on a trip that detours through danger when Tim and Mary McDonn get separated from their parents on a visit to Dinosaur World, the only place on Earth where real dinosaurs live, breathe, and eat. Their compass is broken, and it is getting dark. Will Tim and Mary make it out before nightfall? A hungry Tyrannosaurus Rex hopes they don't. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh no, the compass. Oh no, it broke. <laughs> <laughs> wow. There, you know, I like the 
what I like is the audacity of the filmmaker. To be like, we this can- good enough to be a real dinosaur. Yep. Uh, the amazing Dinomation, registered trademark, okay. dinosaurs make this live action DVD. They don't even call it a movie, it's just a DVD. A spectacular adventure where towering dinosaurs roam free, just as they did millions of years ago. Except that now, you are there. Edge of your seat excitement, featuring the Dinomation dinosaurs, registered trademark. Wait, is that they're saying that? So that's not a quote from somebody who's seen it at the end? No, nope. our only hope is that if it is not an actual movie, it's short. Okay, good. A little easy on the smoke there, guys. Come on. That's the generator. It's <laughs> <laughs> can't it's handle. It can't handle all the movements. <laughs> <laughs> Normally, it doesn't move this much. <laughs> generator on fire. <laughs> so, Colin, what's our last film? The last film is. Low blow, the deadliest weapon is still your fist. And, and my, what a fist he has. Play by the rules and you will lose. Now that's unfortunate. Uh, wait, he's Leo Fong, a martial arts expert who holds the explosive power of lightning in his hands. Lethal weapons ready to strike at a moment's notice. That's Leo Fong? Don't worry, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. Okay, here's your money. Ah, oh, no, no! Hey, forget the sandwich. Oh my god. <laughs> this, is this, is, this, is, this is great. Fong answers the call to battle as the streets of San Francisco explode with action. Troy Donahue, Cameron Mitchell! And Cameron Mitchell is their mascot, even if he's yeah, let us down yeah. most, more often than not lately. And Akosua Buzia, the color purple, star in the searing thriller from the makers of Kill Point. <laughs> the music just starts before we even see action is oh, happening. Yeah. <laughs> He knows, that's how he knows. He hears the music. <laughs> Get them! Low, low, them. Get them low, low! When a wealthy businessman needs to rescue his daughter from the grasp of a mind-controlling cult, he knows who to call. Leo Fong! Fong wastes no time in assembling an awesome display of firepower, recruiting an underworld all-star team featuring the toughest vigilantes and mercenaries ready to do battle with a ruthless array and then I can't read anything else because it has the Blockbuster uh, sticker on it. <sighs> blockbuster ruined everything. Something, something, something. They... Low blow! <laughs> <laughs> and the picture on the back is amazing because it's got... I'm assuming that's Leo Fong and he's punching somebody and it makes it look like uh, they punched his head off. If, if no, I, I, that's not clearly not what's happening in that picture yeah. and you look closely, but I do hope that somewhere in the movie he punches somebody's head off or I will be disappointed. Yeah. Do you think he's gonna have an oversized prosthetic hand for this entire movie? <laughs> He'll be wearing like those foam Hulk hands. Yeah. Just one though. <laughs> Just painted, <clears throat> painted flesh color. Yeah. Low blow. Low blow. <laughs> Stunt driver Cameron Mitchell. <laughs> it's not an action scene, Mr. Rock. It's like this calming music. <laughs> wow. They just got bored. <laughs> what is happening? He doesn't get it. He doesn't give no fucks. <laughs> <laughs> this is like the best action hero. He is the polar opposite of blood death. <laughs> so we watched Soul Crushing. We watched three films uh, that seemingly had nothing in common. It turns out they're all about teamwork. Uh, but the first one we watched. <laughs>
<laughs> What's so funny about that? It's true. It's true. So the first one we watched was Lady Terminator. She mates, then she terminates. What's Lady Terminator about? <laughs> was that like a dodged a bullet? Yes. Yeah. yeah, Lady Terminator. If you've seen the movie Terminator, this is like it, but with Lady in front of the title. We sort of read the plot out earlier on and it seemed very convoluted and there was a point in the movie where it just started being a scene for scene, almost shot for shot remake of Terminator. Mm -hmm. Um, but it like starts out, I think, uh, the South Sea in like 1800 and something. There's some uh, crazy uh, sorceress or something like that. She has sex with men, her husbands, uh, and none of them can sexually satisfy her. And at the end of, of sex, a snake in her vagina eats their penis and kills them. It's quite the orgasm. It took us a while to figure that out, though. At yes. first, it was just sort of blood spurting from below frame, and we're like, what's happening? Yeah, it took us about an hour into the movie to figure <laughs> anything out. <laughs> uh, he dies, 100th husband comes in, immediately afterwards, she needs more sex. And then in the middle of having as sex- women do. <laughs> as women do. Am I right? Am I right? Am I... No, okay. Who invited him? I don't know what you're talking about. I've never had a woman. In the middle of having sex with her hundredth husband, mm -hmm. a snake crawls out of her vagina. No, he pulls the snake out of her oh, vagina. Oh yeah, he great. He, he just reaches it. right in there. He finishes up first, but afterwards he's like, what the yeah. fuck was that? <laughs> yeah, what the fuck, what the? He gets Why did it feel like there was a snake in your vagina? <laughs> Something oh. odd. Oh. <laughs> Um, so he pulls the snake out, and then it turns into uh, this weird curvy dagger. Yeah, and then, uh, so she says, oh, you bested me, and then it gets struck by lightning for some reason. Bastard, you have tricked me. In 100 years, I'll have my revenge on your great-granddaughter. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, okay, well, that doesn't How sound does that so bad. Me? She has a very specific revenge plan. Yeah. Not you, not your children, yeah. not your grandchildren, your great grandchildren. Yeah, could be the next child, but no, she wants to wait for some reason, 100 years. Exactly. What, well, it's a nice round number. Sure. Uh, 100 years. Bastard. That's not the plot. That's not the start to a movie. Like, what? but it was yeah. the start to a movie. <laughs> well, the start to this movie was about 20 minutes of slow mo uh, stock footage of waves. Yeah, uh, yeah. That went on and on and on. And again, they that'll come back again because you know they got to get their money's worth. <laughs> They paid dozens of dollars to use this footage. <laughs> well, after that point, story-wise, it essentially becomes a remake of The Terminator. Right. Almost scene for scene. Um, but whoever made this movie must have said, you know what The Terminator was lacking? Mysticism, <laughs> uh, vagina monsters, <laughs> and experimental nonlinear editing. Yeah. It's true. It's yeah. all true. Because then we just get, it's like a jumbled mess. It's like somebody uh, just like threw all the footage up in the air and wherever it landed, yeah. that's the way they edited the movie. What? Wait. Oh, what? Meanwhile. What? Meanwhile, in another movie. At the tech bar. So this random lady uh, who's an anthropologist. Hey, and she's, she's not a lady. <laughs> She is not a lady, she's an anthropologist. Yeah. Will you stop calling me lady? I'm not a lady, I'm an anthropologist. She says that many times. <laughs> I'm an anthropologist, huh? Uh, she's obsessed with this sea queen or whatever, I think. Uh, and she goes out, first of all, she meets this Chinese man with a long scraggly beard. I'm looking for a book on the legend of the South Sea Queen. <laughs> Oh, he is getting a really bad Yelp review. <laughs> <laughs> she's after this book about the sea queen, because she's obsessed with her, has a painting in her room and everything. She goes out to sea uh, to try to find the lair of the sea queen. Mm -hmm. I'm not quite sure. Yeah, and then they yeah. cut to POV footage of a scuba diver. And somebody called it, they said, we're never gonna see her scuba diving. Yeah, yeah. And, and we didn't. We didn't. It's like, we have this underwater footage. Yeah. That's what she's seen, I guess. Yeah, yeah. sure. <laughs> and, then, and then we cut to her falling onto a bed. Mm -hmm. uh, and then she, where she gets possessed by an animated snake that goes into her vagina. Through her swimsuit, which yeah. is very <laughs> impressive. So it's a magic I, snake. It's a magic <laughs> vagina snake. <laughs> you know what? I don't think it's a magic vagina snake. I think it's a ghost vagina snake. Yeah. 
Ghosts are magic, aren't they? You know, you know what was magical? The wave that came by to destroy the boat. Uh, is it supposed to be a big wave? I think it's supposed to be... Uh. <laughs> oh yeah, where we have to play this back frame by frame, but I think... Yeah, you see the people on the boat and it's daytime and they're like, oh no, storm! And they cut to a reverse and the storm's coming and it's nighttime. It's clearly like a normal, yeah. normal sized wave. Yeah, it's just a normal <laughs> wave. And then I want to say there was a couple frames where they animated like a cartoon boat that it crashes <laughs> over. But we have to play it back frame by frame and analyze this because I'm not positive. <laughs> but I think that's what happened. She's on a quest now to find and kill the great, 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 great granddaughter of the person that uh, uh, satisfied her sexually. Yes, at the yeah. very beginning of the movie. Well, she has to fuck some dudes first. <laughs> Shit. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that's the uh, the Terminator scene. It's just like a, in right. Terminator uh, the the Griffith Observatory when Arnold's walking up naked to the punks. She when, comes out of the sea. She comes out of the sea. She walks up to the punks. It's the exact same setup, only here she just fucks some because yeah. to death. Where are the Fucks guys are even death. wearing like the same outfits as like Bill Paxton. Could, it could be worse. I mean, it could have been Arnold Schwarzenegger trying to fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Bill Paxton, poor Bill Paxton. Oh. Give me your clothes, he's then bend over. <laughs> and he's like, game over, man. <laughs> Well, be, what we started to realize midway through the movie is they were taking chunks of the movie from later on and somehow, or, or for some reason, moving them to the front of the movie. Yeah. But then repeating them later on in right. the order they're supposed to be. Yes. So you'd see an action scene like a mall shootout. Uh, and then... And then her walking down that one air, that, that low angle shot of her walking that was used 150 times. Yeah, you have to do a count to see. I'm pretty sure it's actually 150 <laughs> times. I, I commend them for that. <laughs> you could have you could have ended up in a situation like the tomb where just, there's just hours of people talking. And somebody, the person editing this realized, oh God, this is horribly <laughs> boring. I'm just gonna take that action scene from the end of the movie. I'm just gonna put it here. <laughs> if you stay with us for the next 10 minutes, you're gonna get this scene. They were just like, ah, oh, we don't need to see how she becomes the Lady Terminator. Just cut to her shooting they just people. Keep showing the same shot of her shooting. Yeah. Where, who are these people? What is happening? What? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody had a bunch of footage that made no sense. <laughs> they just cut to New York. So weird. But we didn't know that's what was happening. No. So oh, it was just, it'd be like if you watch the Terminator for the first time and you see Arnold go up to the punks and say, give me your clothes. And then you immediately cut from that to the shootout in the bar. The, yeah. What's it? Tech noir? The tech bar? Yeah. Just cut to that. And then back to like Sarah Connor working in the diner. You'd be like, what? What? But so the, there are these scenes in this movie that are beat for beat, shot for shot, Terminator remakes. I think yeah. it's, yeah, from that point on. Mostly, like, yeah. Mo the big, uh, the iconic scenes yeah. are recreated. So you have the tech noir shootout, yep. and then almost shot for shot, and she'd fall on the ground, the close up of her like hand twitching, which they reused. They re redo her in flames jumping on the car, which is Arnold in flames jumping on the car. They redid the, the police shootout. Look, my paycheck is 50 is bucks short. Sure. Sure. Just sign. Yeah, she needed to, because uh, someone hit her eye with a green rock. She had a scar, not, uh, not in her eye, but around her eye. Yeah. And so she needed to rinse her eye off. Arnold cuts out the eye, he's a robot. This is a possessed woman. She's not a robot, but she cuts out her eye and then through water magic, <laughs> She puts her, her cut out eyeball under the faucet and it makes her eyeball work again. So she puts it back into her head, but when she decides to put it back, it's, on the, it's the other eye now all of a sudden. <laughs> oh yeah, he used the magic rock to hit her eye and then she just machine gunned him in the balls. Yeah, was, and then he died. And that was it for him. <laughs> that was it for Grandpa Exposition. Oh, well. oh his groin, his only weakness. <laughs> By the way, he, <laughs> he was really using dick power. Yeah. I mean, it, it, what it seemed like to me was the editor knew how to piece a movie together, but didn't have the materials 
to put it together correctly. Mm. Right. Oh, I know there's supposed to be an action beat here. We didn't film another action beat. I guess I'll just take this action beat and reuse <laughs> it over here. <laughs> So, on one hand, you kind of want to applaud him, right? <laughs> like, he used every part of the buffalo. Mm. But... <laughs> it's it's other... Nose-to-tail editing. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you serve beer here or just milk? Well, uh, so then we get to the, the final sequence of the movie, and we were all debating, like, is the Lady Terminator going to get set on fire, and is she going to be a robotic body for some <laughs> reason? For no reason. For, for no reason. Uh, we turned out to be wrong, but she does... We were kind of right. She was we're half close. right. Yeah. She was as close to a robot as you could be without being a robot. <laughs> oh. Watch out. She, she has laser eyes now. And then the action scene begins. They all just shoot at this car that Lady Terminator is driving for like an her, hour. Her indestructible car. I don't know what make it is, but... Well, hey, it did, something blew up. Yeah. I'm okay with that. <laughs> not, not, not so okay with that, but... The car that is... <laughs> At one point in the movie, literally stronger than a tank. Yeah, the tank, yeah, the tank keeps hitting it. it. <laughs> they shot it with missiles twice. <laughs> well, technically it was only once because it's the same footage used twice. <laughs> what is this car made of? <laughs> Automantium. <laughs> oh, oh. You nailed it, Rich. So good. You nailed it. <laughs> uh, we we get the the movie ends on a grand whimper. <laughs> yeah, instead of, instead of you know like the, our our Linda Hamilton you know defeating her through her wits or whatever, uh, she re finally remembers that she has a magic sword with her. Oh yeah. And and Lady Terminator falls on her magic sword. Yes. Does she even know what's a magic sword though? Her uncle just gave it to her. Here, take this. Yep. So then what? She oh yeah, she just kind of goes. Boop. And she's gone, mm -hmm. and then the magic sword flies into outer space. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. Oh. It went into space. <laughs> Put warp speed. It went into space. <laughs> <laughs> to join its people on, on planet. Poochie went back to his home planet. <laughs> And then that's kind of it. They just sort of walk off, get into a car, and drive away. Well, there's a third wheel. There's like uh, uh, scientists. Uh, yeah, there's like doctor a doctor scientist. Yeah. He's got a lab coat on. I don't know who he's supposed to be, but he's just like, he just puts his arms around him, and they all walk to the car together, and you're like, who is this? <laughs> and then they all drive away. I'd say we take this party back to my place. <laughs> <laughs> oh, doctor yeah. scientist. Doctor swinger. <laughs> I think, I think the editor was just trying to get fired. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it didn't work. <laughs> oh fuck, it fell on the Ishtar trailer. <clears throat> get that off the table. Get that, get that off. Get, get it off, Rich, get it off. I am, I am. I don't even know why it's there. Well, I mean, there's a lot of film. Fuck it's just it. a trailer, though. A trailer is like three minutes long. I'm, Why is there I'm, so much? Fuck it, just leave it. Just doing my it. best. Just fuck it. Oh my god. Oh my god, Rich Evans. Uh, I'm trying. Hold it's on. Everywhere. This is getting out of control. Oh, it's getting everywhere. Holy shit, uh, dude. I, I touched it. I touched it. <clears throat> cut! 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 No, I mean, cut the film! I'm stuck! So the next movie that we, oh fuck. Uh, the next movie we watched was Lost in Dinosaur World, Rich Evans. It's like Jurassic Park for babies. For, we should say this isn't a professionally made, what is, what's happening? This is chaos. There's no barcode. No. There's no nothing. And if you look, there's perforation. Like somebody printed this out on their home printer. <laughs> so we're like, okay, this is gonna be a promotional video for Dinosaur World, if that's even really a place. Uh, and it turned out to be that that was exactly what it was. This is okay. the Stegosaurus. 
I hate my life. <laughs> <laughs> it, it kind of like, it bounces between actual attempts to like uh, live action up a children's story and blatant advertisement for Dinosaur World. They, they try to play it off as if the dinosaurs are real. Mm -hmm. Well, that was what we were uncertain of for the first part of it, yeah. <laughs> oh my God, it's so real. I'm gonna say they filmed at a real park. Yeah, yeah. look, yeah. animatronics. Yeah. Yeah. So let's go find some dinosaurs. That's a dinosaur. That is a dinosaur. You dickhead kid. But is it supposed to be a real dinosaur? I mean, I I could be wrong, but I swear to God, at the end it said that it was different. I saw other parks. Maybe there was a fourth dinosaur world that closed down just due to lack of interest. Hmm. That's where they filmed this one, and then shortly after it closed down. Like like the other Jurassic Park island? Yes, exactly. <laughs> Site B. Site B. Site B. <laughs> this is Site B. There's this happy family, and they, they visit these, this lovely little dinosaur park zoo with real real dinosaurs. We weren't sure if they were supposed to be animatronic or not, but they're supposed to be real dinosaurs. Yeah. And then the kids get lost at night because they're idiots. <laughs> and, then, and then they find them after nothing exciting happens. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, they run from a Tyrannosaurus Rex puppet who can like barely move its head or do anything. <laughs> you can hear the animatronics like. <laughs> well, you can see the smoke from the animatronics at some point. In the, it's malfunctioning. <laughs> it wasn't the. It wasn't the asteroid that killed the dinosaurs. It was arthritis. <laughs> 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 The whole movie is like building up to this like Tyrannosaurus Rex, you know what I mean? And then like the big reveal is like you can just barely see its head kind of poking out from behind a bush and it just sort of moves slightly. It's like Tammy and the T-Rex, its legs can't move. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Dad, over here! Yeah, over here! Not dead! They might hear us turn its head slightly. <laughs> But it can't. It, it's it's physically incapable. <laughs> so it's always it's, it's less realistic than Tammy and the yeah, T Rex it's by the far. Worst. Yeah. Yeah. These are awful. They've like gone to the point of like even like trademarking or like patenting the Dynamation dinosaurs. Is if anybody would want to steal this fucking technology? <laughs> it looks awful. <laughs> <laughs> it was like... <laughs> Well, to start it off with promise, because we see they're panning around the kid's room. We see he loves dinosaurs. He's putting on his gear. Mm -hmm. And then his little sister comes in. And we thought at first that she just like swore like a sailor. <laughs> <laughs> and so we're like, whoa, maybe this isn't the kid's movie like we thought. Why are you dressed like that? We're going to dinosaur world. Yeah, but it's a park, not an African jungle or something. Not a fucking jungle? <laughs> Did she just say not a fucking jungle? Not an African jungle. <laughs> You dickhead, come down for your hamburgers. <laughs> oh, that reminds me of the scene with the burgers. Oh, no. Oh, no. The cafeteria. Or yeah. It's the, the one mildly entertaining scene in the film. So Which one? The, the burger scene. That was the entertaining? Compared to everything else? <laughs> okay. So, keeping in mind this is a, based off of a children's book, this yeah. was probably supposed to be a little more whimsical. Though. Yeah, and, but everything just looked dumb. Yeah. Crisp veggies and greens, tomatoes and beans. And a dressing our chef recommends. That oh, looks ah! delicious. Oh my god. I'll bet I know just what you want. This isn't technically a song, right? This is just music with someone rhyming over it. It's kind of a song. Taco Pterodactyl. That's big. That we're done hash. Bill. But, but why put one it. song in a movie? Kids, you either I, make a musical or you don't. No idea. Kill time, kids. We gotta have, we gotta have content. Where's the content? <laughs> what happens? What happens in the film? I don't. They walk around. They just walk around. What kind of script is this? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, maybe they thought they needed like a hit single or something to go with, like, to sell. <laughs> no. So in, a, in, the, in the gift shop at Dinosaur World, in addition to they thousands got, like, of these CD, unsold a DVDs, CD single. they have thousands of stacks of CDs. Get, get James Horner in to write a <laughs> hit single. Oh, too soon. You know, that Circle of Life really sold the Lion King. We need to get it, let's get a song in here. We need a song. <laughs> 
it's like so sad that we were more impressed by the helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> well, at that point, it was like whatever we can get. We were like, shocked that they actually could afford a helicopter. Yeah. I just didn't think they would spring for it. Yeah. No. Yeah. Whoa. Oh, they that? did get a helicopter. Get a helicopter. What the fuck? Just like Lady Terminator. Oh, wow. That was, that was like a higher up at the park. Yeah who wanted to highlight the star attraction, which was the T-Rex. Right. Let's get a big spotlight on it from above. Get that helicopter, we gotta sell this thing. <laughs> they they wanted their product to look impressive. Yeah. Yes. And they what failed. <laughs> <laughs> Miserably. <laughs> oh, I guess Ooh. baby Ellie is hungry. Yeah, this is baby, I can't wait to see daddy. Here's the most important part. I think that this is one of the best movies we've ever watched on Best of the Worst, because it was 25 minutes long. <laughs> oh, that's bullshit. That's that's bullshit. That's that's a funny joke once or twice. No, no. I think it's always true though. That's the thing. The shorter the movie, the better it is. Would you would you say it was more entertaining than Lady Terminator? No, but it was shorter. That trumps well, which, everything, which, Rich. Which would you rather watch again? Oh. This, because it's shorter. Oh. You're a madman. <laughs> You're a madman. Well, there was a point where we said it was like kind of 15 minutes in, and you're like, God, it's, it, it feels like a feature length yeah. film. Like, yeah. you know. Yeah. yeah, that's true. Is that a CGI? I think it was. Um, yeah, I think you're right. I feel like except for the claw close up. CGI has come a long way since 2010 when this was released. <laughs> <laughs> no, just keep holding on that shot. Yeah, are, are they gonna come back? Is that the joke? They gotta, yeah, they're they gonna come to... running back? Nope. Oh, no. No. Wow. <laughs> All right. So the final movie that we watched tonight was Lublum. Lublum. <laughs> Uh, not starring this guy, <laughs> not even co-starring this guy. Uh, who is that guy in the movie? This guy? Yeah. He's not in the movie. Oh, that's weird. What? What happens in Loblo, Jack? Loblo is about uh, ex-detective Loblo, who is now private investigator Loblo. And he's a bit of a slob, and he's a bit loose with the parking rules, but he's hired to find a billionaire's daughter after she joins Cameron Mitchell's evilish cult. I say evilish because the cult doesn't seem to do anything that bad. No, they make people do general gardening. Yeah. They, they do take people's money. But to be fair, the people do sign the money over willingly. Yeah. Mm. And so he, uh, detect this is not Detective Loblo. I should stop showing that picture. This is Detective Loblo. Detective Loblo assembles a super team of fighters from various backgrounds. You got a boxer, you got a kickboxer, you got a knife guy, and you got a lady with muscles. He's, he's like the main character from the Miami Connection after 30 years of crippling depression. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this this movie is a celebration of laziness, not not the character, yeah. not the filmmaking, but just the characters. Yeah. Because yeah. your main hero is a lazy slob who lives in a junkyard. It could go either way. Yeah, this is this supposed to be his house? Oh my god, he his house is like filthy a filthy dump. <laughs> <laughs> and the main villain is Cameron Mitchell, who. We should point out, this is like Cameron Mitchell hitting rock bottom. Oh man. This is not like, some of the movies that we love with him were actually made after this, we looked it up. Uh, but this is him, like he is half asleep, he is half passed out, he does not move through the whole movie. They cut to him and he's just in a chair. He's always in a chair. He's always like half asleep and he doesn't look, he doesn't know where he's at. Probably so they could kind of like tie him to the chair so he, to doesn't, make sure he doesn't fall over, over yeah. or something. So that had nothing to do with anything. Well, now, now it's gonna, oh, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> That's where Cameron wants to sit today. <laughs> both him, both Cameron Mitchell and uh, Leo Fong, mm -hmm. It feels like we're getting a glimpse into their reality. Like it's not just the characters, yeah. like it's their personal lives are informing the characters. Sure, yeah, and like Leo Fong was probably uh, a bigger star in his home country. He, he wasn't, I looked it up. Oh. Well then why, I don't know. He's just the guy that tried to be Jackie Chan and oh. is terrible at it. Yeah, he really was. Oh, oh. <laughs> 
<laughs> by the way, if only we would have known, we could have had a theme of like elderly vigilantes. <laughs> if only we would have known before ah! Bloodbirds. <laughs> you, I'm just the driver. To be fair, he does do all of his own stunts. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, napping. Uh, yeah. Cameron Mitchell doesn't do his own stunts. There's one shot where he has to walk, and it's clear it's a stunt double. That's right. That's right. That's right. He got up from a bed. Yeah. He got up from a bed. That was his stunt. Oh, that's that's when he was wearing his his bed robe. His, oh, he just, yeah. just, just just his hood. Just the hood. <laughs> None. Of, yeah. This is all just Cameron Mitchell, and he's got a robe like a Palpatine robe on. But like one from like a a, a dollar store. Yeah. And and sunglasses. And he spends the whole movie slumped over, mumbling lines that are so incomprehensible that they had to hire another actor to say them again into a megaphone. <laughs> Just keep the camera as far away from him as possible. Please. Smells like booze. <laughs> so he can't see the stink lines coming off. <laughs> Wish she's reading his dialogue for him. <laughs> I, I do like when Cameron Mitchell was, was getting intimate with the lady, he still kept his robe and his sunglasses on. <laughs> <laughs> but it was just the robe, it wasn't attached to anything. No, it no, the, it was just the hood. Just the hood. Just the hood. He's like... Oh, my God. Oh. 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 He's just wearing the hood! <laughs> <laughs> He's just wearing the hood! That's a different sleeping outfit. <laughs> this is his sex robe. <laughs> oh. What? <laughs> This is my sleeping hood, <laughs> mm, like Mama used to wear. So you know he's the bad guy. It was a hoodlum. What? So I wonder if that if that girl that like second in command who was like reading his lines. Do you think she was even in the actual? She script? was just a PA who was like just would have to prop him up and bring him to set every yeah. morning. Like, Rrr. no, she was. She, I, I will guarantee that she was not in the original script. Okay. As soon as Cameron Mitchell got to set, They're they, like, oh they my God. knew they needed someone immediately. Yeah. That's, that's not a bad running joke. <laughs> oh, but he's gonna beat him. <laughs> And the funny that the other guy just kept running. <laughs> Bye, <Bye-bye>. Jess! <laughs> I think he was trying to be like cool, aloof American. I think he was trying to be Fletch. Okay. And his lack of any sort of acting skill or basic comprehension of the English language just means charisma. He, he was just like a black hole of charisma. He cared so little that he didn't even care about his driving. Nothing. That was the best part of the movie. It was. Once we realized that, well, at first we weren't sure it was a running gag, mm. and then it just kept <laughs> happening. Yeah. His bad driving, although he is Chinese. No. <sighs> you sicken me. Oh, you mean it's not really an opening scene so much as is some just things are happening all of a sudden. It's just you literally starts in the middle of like a, a robbery at a deli yeah. or something no like that. No setup, no establishing shots, just and guys no, shooting. And no shotgun mic to record any sound. That's a running <laughs> gag in this movie is like there I couldn't hear it. Any of yeah, the dialogue. The, the, yeah, the audio recording is bad. So, so Leo Fong yeah. is working in an office and he overhears a ruckus. His detective senses go off. <laughs> yeah. And he decides to help the ruckus. And the ruckus is an armed robbery at the local deli sandwich restaurant shop. Yes. And so our hero solves the problem. Slowly walking in. Hey, if I am that ready. This audio is terrible. Is this our hero? Yeah. yeah. This old man? It's yeah. Like... By murdering everyone. <laughs> yeah. It would have been more in character for him to try and finagle a free sandwich out of him. <laughs> like, what, wouldn't it have been great if the only reason he stopped the robbery was so we could try and get a free sandwich? Yeah. <laughs> well, then we learn that he is an ex-police officer because he gets reamed out by his ex-police chief. But then I guess they decide that he's a lovable scrappy dude. So they just, ah, you murdered some people. But go ahead. They give him his gun back. Yep. Yeah, well, that's the thing is like it, it sets up uh, a guy comes to him, rich white man comes to him and says, my daughter was abducted by this cult. She's been brainwashed by this cult. I want her back. I will give you a shitload of money to do that. Mm-hmm. He goes into the cult. Uh, they're listed in the phone book. 
course. So then he drives there, and then he gets beat up, and he leaves, mm -hmm. and then nothing related to that happens for a good 30, 45 minutes. Well, and a lot of this we're just piecing together, but I think I think there were some decent character moments in there. The bad driving, the fact that his car never starts, and he has to, like, hit it with a... T t it, it brings a tire iron out. It just hits the engine. Exactly. And that starts the car every time. Yeah. yeah. And he's got, like, a messy house. He's got this weird relationship with his secretary, who's also his wife, girlfriend, egg maker. And mother. <laughs> That's his mom. <laughs> Uh, so why not? But so like with a better actor or I mean a better script, come on. Uh, this could have been a fun little character like this, the slob with the heart of gold, right? Yeah. The, the, the half-hearted detective. Yeah. I'll kind of do my job. So he had no idea like he kept sort of showing up in these scenes and then sort of watching these fighters. So they had these two kind of uh, Latino guys like sort of knife fighting in the streets as they do. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Oh my God. What? Check your privilege. We just kind of assume that he's assembling a team that he will use later, even though he doesn't know yet that he will need a team. Yeah. <laughs> That's the thing. He starts assembling them before he realizes like that the compound is so heavily guarded. I really think he just wanted to start an illegal fighting pit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which, which would be amazing and fun. Yeah. Billy Blanks is in the movie. Billy Blanks yeah. is in this movie. We didn't realize it till the credits. The Ty Bo guy. Yeah. And, and so is the child of Ron Jeremy and Andre the Giant. <laughs> so Loblo finally decides that his grunts have done enough of the cleanup work. <laughs> he's gonna go in, he's gonna take care of the, the crumbs. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And so he, he starts infiltrating and, you know, does, does a little slow foo and eventually finds a guy who he really doesn't like. His head turned into a cake. Oh. So out of context. It, for the movie. It's such an yeah. overtly violent move in a movie that hasn't had. I mean, other, you know, people are punching and stuff, and he shoots people, but it's so subdued. And then just all of a sudden, it's like, <laughs> oh yeah, and he's angry. He's just like, yeah. and that was like right out of Miami Connection, like where they just start slashing. Yeah, you're like, where did? How did we get here? <laughs> why no that? Idea. Why that one guy? Yeah, 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 it's not even the main boss. Um, so they show up at uh, Loblo's dump of a house, which is actually uh, a dump. Yeah, and we're, we're convinced that Loblo is a homeless man because yeah. he's just squatting yeah. here. He has a giant piece of wood on his porch. Oh no, knocking them over didn't work. <laughs> Run away. <laughs> whoop, 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 whoop. Oh. Hit him with a tire iron! <laughs> <laughs> they have guns. What no, he, I think he took them away this time. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only time he's had any expression in the whole movie. But they paid 50 bucks for that car, so he was really excited about this. <laughs> they, gotta, they gotta make it. I was gonna say, yeah, this is probably just a junk car that was out there anyway. <laughs> <laughs> what is he doing? That's <laughs> his He's like, that's his <laughs> He just put on safety goggles. Oh, 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 cut the top off. Oh, just because they can. <laughs> They're really getting their money's worth. Oh, this is amazing. And then spends like three hours cutting off the roof of their car. Like there is clearly a lighting change. Oh, there's a time jump. Like yeah. there's a huge time jump. He, he spent some time cutting off the roof of their car. You need an insert shot of them in the car, just like looking at their watch. Like <laughs> he's still he's still going. Like shaving. Yeah. yeah like. So what's the plan when he finally gets this thing off? Uh, I, don't I, I guess we'll just run away, and then they just run away. See, I think, I think most people are just used to martial artists being like really fast. Mm -hmm. So he's so slow, you know, they, they just block too fast. <laughs> what, what, oh no, ah! Yeah, yeah. So he saves the girl, he goes into the, the, the girl's being held, or the billionaire's daughter is being held in the uh, like hospital at the cult or something like right. that. Um, the cult that we still don't know what they did that was so evil. And then th they get paid for murdering people. Yep. Which is a normal thing that heroes do. meets the 
the billionaire, gives the daughter back. He meets the billionaire at another dump. Every house in this movie is like a dump. <laughs> yeah, but that was like a fancy, that was like a two-story dump. Yeah. So, you know, they're moving all and off. I, I assume that's the larger dump that Loblo bought with his, <laughs> with his money. <laughs> And then we, we end on the nice final character gag of the, his, he wants to go to Vegas, he's got all this money, but that darn car. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, well, and you had said like, this would be great if they just held on this for the entire credits, and then they did. <laughs> well, he didn't, even, he didn't even know the, the, they were gonna do the engine sounds that he said, yeah. if they just do it through the entire credits. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's, that's actually so like funny and clever that I was convinced there was no way the movie would actually do yeah. it. <laughs> But they did. Yeah, they did. To right the movie's the credit, they did. Everything involving that car was clever and great. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like something out of another movie. It's like the car had more character than Lobo. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the car wrote his own scenes. <laughs> <laughs> the car gets ready, just crossing out lines. Like, what if I? What if I do this? Like, what if I? Hit, I'm gonna. I'm gonna hit the curb. <laughs> <laughs> I think that'd be funny. Take this. I need to take for me. It's true. If you think of the car as a character, he like stole every scene he was in. <laughs> <laughs> Low Blow is just his partner. Yeah. Oh, it's a buddy cop movie. Low Blow oh, is a rusty awesome. old car. Low Blow outacted by a car. <laughs> <laughs> really true. <laughs> That's not an exaggeration, right? No. No. No, you have to hit it under the hood, Low Blow. Just end like this. <laughs> The credit's going up while the, the car's starting noises. <laughs> oh my god, it's gonna happen. That might happen. Oh, <laughs> yep. Oh, yay! 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 Yeah. Okay, so we have Lady Terminator. Uh, lost on Dinosaur World. <laughs> and blah, blah, blah. Uh, uh, Rich, what is best of the worst? This is really tough for me. It's it's almost a coin flip between the the. This. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. No, no, the the potential of low blow to be a brilliant to to work with that character and make that character something great, versus just the insane editing and the remake miss. Ah, it's close, but I'm going with Lady Terminator. Colin. Um, again, it's like really close between Lady Terminator and Loblo. Um, the, this was crazy, it had some crazy moments because of the editing. Uh, I don't know if I can give it any points though for just ripping off Terminator shot for shot. I mean, that's really bringing nothing to the table. Um, so I don't know if I can give it like points for that. And I think like Loblo was just so weird and that character, was, you know, I, I would watch more movies with that guy, with Lobo. <laughs> like, including him in his car, as long as he had the car there. I would watch more movies, and I think it was just, yeah, like somebody said, it was like a celebration of just laziness. Like, mm -hmm. just everyone was so annoyed by having to do anything in this movie. It was amazing. <laughs> so you had this, like, super lazy hero who couldn't be bothered. And then you had, like, Cameron Mitchell on the other end who just couldn't even stand, for Christ's sake. <laughs> like, it was just, like... It was such a... That man's crippling alcoholism is so hilarious. Uh, it was such an oddity. It was so weird uh, <laughs> on every level. I gotta say Loblo. I loved it. I thought it was great. Uh, uh, yeah, I have to go with Loblo as well. Uh, Lady Terminator is a very, very close second mm -hmm. um, because of the editing. That's like yeah, a movie, yeah. like, like a Tim and Eric sketch, like it's made in the editing. Yeah, and so much of that movie is hilarious because of the editing, but Loblo, like the laziness of the main character, and then literally every time they cut to Cameron Mitchell, I started laughing. Oh yeah, yeah every absolutely. single time. Absolutely. <laughs> they bring they bring out a chair, and they they bring out like the ugliest thrift store thrift store chair. They put it on a like a dumpy pallet, <laughs> and then they cut to a random shot, and they cut back, and Cameron Mitchell's just there. <laughs> So it's like the, the, that level of laziness on uh, partially the filmmaking, but more so like the performances and the characters. Yeah. The performances uh, informing the characters, like that sold me on low blow. I mean, this is so close. <laughs> Both win. Let's just say that. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Both win. Uh, my pick though, because of the editing is Lady Terminator. Mm. There was some joy in discovering in, in this, in this drug-filled edit journey, so. So Lady Terminator edges it out by a hair, low blow. By, by editing, it edges it out with editing. Yes. 
Maybe, maybe it was edited by Katherine Hepburn. <laughs> First of all, why not go with Michael J. Fox? <laughs> Katherine Hepburn. Uh, Michael J. Fox he is the modern he didn't, he didn't. Well, he didn't have that yet. Yeah, but I have to cut out time. It was. It was, it was yeah. That's no, I'm just picturing Catherine Hepburn, like hunched over a moviola, like... Poor Catherine Hepburn. Oh. What a terrible thing to say. <laughs> this is her last, her last, like, act before dying was having to re-edit Lady Terminator. Nothing pushed her over. She was found, she hanged herself in the editing room. <laughs> this is going to dark places. Well, I guess the point is that neither one of these are going to be destroyed. Yeah, no, bo either. both of these are worth seeking out. Oh, yeah, both absolutely. are worth watching. Um, does anyone want to destroy Lost in Dinosaur World? Yeah. I mean, that's just so boring and lame. But I don't know. It's kind of inoffensive. And... Do we want to destroy it just for fun? Yeah, sure. sure. Oh, yeah, that'd be great. OK. Yeah, but it's a park, not a freaking jungle or something.